Hey everybody, this is Ghost Stoner. I was just on Dro TV. Check them out. He is amazing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and get lit with him. Welcome to My First Time, the show about your first time getting high on marijuana. I'm your host, Mike Freeman with Dro TV. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, Ghost Stoner. What's happening? Hey man, how's it going? Pleasure to be here. Thank you hey. for having me. Yes, thank you for uh, coming on Drug TV. You can find more of Ghost Owner, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, no Facebook? Uh, there's a Facebook, yeah. I don't post uh, any of my videos. It's just silly memes and shit is over there. So okay. if you just like cool. memes and stuff, Facebook, yeah. Okay, awesome. We'll have all the links in the description below. Uh, we don't mess around with Facebook that much, so. Uh, <laughs> don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, dude, uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Let everybody know uh, whereabouts you are and uh, what you got going on in the cannabis community. So, hi, everybody, and thank you for having me again, bro. Uh, I'm on the East Coast, you know, um, on the uh, Carolina side and close to the beach. So, we are living our best lives over here for the most part. Uh, and for the industry, we kind of, me and my wife, um, we do mostly reviews. But for the most part, we'd love to do silly bits. Uh, I talk about fantasy football when it's fantasy football time. And uh, we used to do a lot of kitchen stuff, which we're going to probably start getting back into hopefully soon. So that's pretty much us in a nutshell. Awesome. Yes, uh, you and your wife, you guys make some great content. So uh, definitely go down Thanks, and make sure you give him a follow on whatever your favorite platform is to uh, to follow stoners. Um Everything is a little different. Uh, mostly, you, anything you see on Instagram, you're gonna probably see on YouTube. But uh, TikTok, we, you know, we get it more a little personal over there. Sure, awesome, sweet. Uh, so, dude, this show is my first time. Please let us know about the first time you got high. Man, uh, it, it was a pretty fucking awesome. So, uh, we'll, let's go back to me hating weed. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's start. We'll start there. there. <laughs> uh, I. Uh, when I, my first concert was uh, the Eagles actually at giant stadium, their hell freezes over tour when they were never going to play a show again. Uh, oh, of course that didn't happen. Their opener was Cheryl Crow. Long story short, I smell wow. weed for the first time. I fucking hate it. My parents are like, that's marijuana. I'm like, Oh, that's terrible. It's not good for you. And they're like, good. Don't smoke it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so fast forward. I'm like 12 at that time. And I'm an athlete. So uh, pretty much all my life. Yeah. It was, you know, you don't smoke. If you play baseball, you play sports, you just don't smoke weed. Uh, that's the stigma you're you're taught. So uh, I'm a junior in high school and I'm friends with a lot of stoners. I didn't know I was friends with a lot of stoners because they wouldn't tell me they were stoners. Uh, come to find out, I learned this day uh, they were. So we're sitting in our computer class um, over the loudspeaker. We get told that the game is canceled for the day. The baseball game is canceled due to rain. Uh, and you know, all the space for players like, oh, darn, that sucks. <laughs> um, and my friends in the class were like, hey, why don't you drive, uh, drive me home? I need a ride home. Uh, so go out to Silverton. I'm from Tom's River, New Jersey. Uh, so if anybody knows anything about Tom's River, New Jersey, it's where they film the Jersey Shore, uh, seaside, that whole fucking area. Um, if anybody knows anything about Silverton, they could only imagine how this goes. It's Silverton just, you know, put Silverton in your mind, Jersey people. <laughs> so Go to my buddy Noah's house. I'm going to call him out, uh, drive him home. And on the way home, it's him and my buddy Tom. And they're talking about, we're going to get you high for the first time. And I'm like, no, no, I'm cool, man. I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't do it. I'm like, no, no, you're going to smoke with us. It's going to be fine. I'm like, oh, but what if I get drug tested? Like, you're not going to get drug tested. <laughs> uh, because we never, apparently they always scared us with drug testing. We never got drug testing. Uh, um, so we go to his house. Uh, they they have a fat blunt rolled up and apparently it's laced <laughs> it, it wasn't they okay. just said it was laced <laughs> like oh there's all shit in it uh it was steed steed uh, can't even talk it was seeds like stems and seeds because it's garbage weed back then that's all we got okay i'm an old fuck um so we're hanging out his window because obviously we can't you know smoke inside the house uh, he lives in a ranch that's just open to the development. Like everybody could see you for the most part. You're not like being discreet. You're literally hanging out the window of a house, just smoking like this and just blowing chimneys of, of uh, dro. It was dro, but it wasn't dro. <laughs> um, 
so it's like halfway done and like okay it's your turn i'm like oh okay I'll do it like you want us to blow it in your face you know you know shock give you a shotgun or you are a pussy I'm like no no i'll do it i'll do it um i smoked cigarettes at this time so it was already kind of like in a little bit of smoking okay um so I, I knew how to like inhale and do it so i inhaled i held it in and i cough obviously like everybody does their first time uh, and immediately was like oh that's delicious like that was nice I, I kind of like that. That's not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, proceed to then, you know, take fucking five more riffs to the face. Like, go ahead, go, I can just get fucking lit. <laughs> <sighs> so we proceeded to finish that one, which was pretty big. And I probably got a 10 to 12 hits my first time, which normally is not something you would do on your first one. You take like one or two puffs and you're good, which is probably why I am the way today. Uh, <laughs> we can get. I'm, I'm driving, right? So I drove them all home. They're younger. They don't have other license because uh, I'm one of the older kids in our class. Okay. So we, we, we go out to my car thinking we're going to drive to 7-Eleven after we smoke because obviously we have the fucking munchies because that's what happens. In sure. Giggling the whole way to the car. I get behind the steering wheel. I, don't even start the car. I'm just giggling my ass off, just laughing. They're like, what's so funny? I'm like, I can't drive. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. What the fuck, man? I'm just... I don't feel nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so, like, I'll just smoke a cigarette right here and then we'll drive when you're done with the cigarette. So we smoke a cigarette. We listen to fucking Cypress Hill. Like you always do. Uh, boom, Betty, bye, bye. We do nice. a dance to Boom, Betty, bye, bye because we're fucking stoned and make up some stupid dance that proceeds to be a thing for the future. We all do. <laughs> Finally get the courage to drive to 7-Eleven. Mind you, 7-Eleven is at the end of a straight road. You could see 7-Eleven from dude's house. The end of Silverton Street on the main drag is 7-Eleven. People know this fucking 7-Eleven. So uh, I finally get enough courage to go into it. And it's literally like the half-baked scene, you know, when they're all like inside the Slurpee machine. Yeah. The whatchamacallit bars are fucking gigantic. And it was literally like that. It felt like that. I got, um, I, I always tell a story how I got like three of the hot dogs and you never get the hot dogs at 7-Eleven. <laughs> um, so these are delicious. They weren't delicious. They were fucking terrible. Uh, the taquito, like all the shit that you would normally never get, I got. <clears throat> Sorry, that's uh, you got a sound there. So we we proceed. We got Funyuns. We got everything, dude. I, I had a credit card, which I probably shouldn't have. A 17-year-old with a stupid credit card. Uh, I load up, get everything. We all fucking leave with hands full of shit. Go back to dude's house to go smoke again. <laughs> Nice. Here's what we do. Um, <laughs> and I'm just eating sun chips and Mountain Dew to the face. Just crazy. I ate a two fucking, one of the big bags, not the small little bitch bags, like the real bag and a two liter in his backyard. I finished to my head that day. Uh, it was such a, you know, great first time experience. A couple people came over uh, from school after we got back and it was just like, this is my, these are my people. This is where I want to be. I don't want to be on the baseball field with a bunch of dude men's <laughs> for the most part. Uh, just a bunch of bros broing out. Uh, this is this was home to me. Uh, these guys just goofing off and listening to great music and just kept smoking. But this is the life. And it hasn't really stopped. Here we are today. And it's you know, 20, uh, fuck, 23 years later. Nice. Smoked ever since then. You know, I probably didn't smoke every day from that start. It was uh, whenever we could get it. And for the first few months, it was sporadic. It was back in the day when you got a dime and a duchy and you would meet your boy at the gas station and he would take three hours when he said he's going to be right there. We yeah. had beepers, you know what I mean? Pay phones. It was a lot tougher of a time. Um, so it wasn't an everyday thing. But I think by my senior year, once I started slinging, because I was like, fuck, I need to smoke every day. So how do I start slinging? <laughs> Uh, got a dude, man, and and me and my boys always in our circle. Always, uh, one of us was always, you know, readily available with something. So, ever since then, about twenty, some, probably twenty one years of almost every day straight, and uh, I, I wouldn't change it for the fucking world, man. Nice, awesome, awesome, uh, great story. Uh, it's the whole social aspect of it right from the beginning. You could tell that, yeah, like you said, this is my people, and uh, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's and it wasn't just like a certain set of people. It was a bunch of kids from the high school that they were groups, different groups. But like here they are all getting together to smoke at my dude's house, and I'm just like, 
I didn't know y'all were friends <laughs> type of deal because yeah, yeah. normally you wouldn't you don't see them chilling in school they all had their little clicks and sat at different tables they went to different fucking restaurants uh when because we were actually allowed to leave uh, our school and go eat out okay um which is probably why everybody was smoking fucking weed together <laughs> which was which ended up being that time frame for me when we went you know to lunch every time it was a blunt at a fucking burger king we went to every day god damn and then we went to uh, our senior year i think it was uh see Corsi's pizza that the fucking name of it it was either Corsi's or al's pizza everybody in Tom's River knows al's fucking pizza either or it's always food weed and food man it's a yeah, thing uh i i graduated high school in 2000 so i'm i'm 40 oh same and, yeah uh, so we lived the same life it was it was simpler times but yeah like you said i had a I had a pager and I remember waiting hours and as, as much simpler as a time as it was, it still sucked. It was like uh, time wasted just doing all these <laughs> stupid things where now it's like, I can literally go to a store or a dispensary or, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, uh, it's, it's a weird looking back. It almost seems like it's a whole nother time line. Like, like, how did we exist? How did we get it? Done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stoners were very, you know, and, and the fact that we were making bongs. I had a buddy, Billy, that would make my, okay, Earth smokes a lot. We all know who Earth smokes a lot. He can make anything out of anything. But sure. back in the day, uh, he, again, we all had that one dude in our group that could find anything in the household because obviously pieces weren't readily available like they were today. Right. You know, you could order them off the internet. You had to go to a fucking bong shop that was never close to you. The shit wasn't cheap for the most part. And you couldn't have it around your house because your parents would find it, right? If I, I don't know how your parents were, but my parents hated it. So you always needed a dude that knew how to construct the craziest fucking bong. Obviously, grab bongs, but like, you know, he he would make he made one two liter type of arm thing. So it was like a social smoking thing, where there was an arm here, and then there was a joint, and then you could pass to each side of the table, just like here's your mouthpiece, and then people could just light it in the center. It was just so cool how. You know, we just did shit back then to do it. And then with alcohol, people still do the same shit that they've been doing for hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Legalize awesome. weed, we'll start dabbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Imagine I got, doing that. I got a friend, he's got a, I mean, I'm, it's commonplace now, but like five years ago, he had a mobile dab rig in his car. And uh, I'm like- It's amazing. <laughs> just like, is it a DeLorean? <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, and we used to drive around with i don't know if you did the bubblers thing in your center console back in like the 2000 time because that was the hot shit to do if you had like the bubblers with the pouch yeah and then it would spill and you have the bong water stench everywhere <laughs> yeah we were dumb we actually drove around with bongs and stuff but yeah uh, yeah that's how we got in trouble yeah yeah what you smoking <laughs> on there uh this is comes street heat street heat okay street heat I've never had it before. It's about 33%. It's an indicate. It's fucking delicious. It goes great with coffee. Nice. There you go. Awesome. Uh, so you mentioned fantasy football. Are you a Giants fan or a Jets right. fan? <laughs> uh, a Jets fan. Jets. Okay. Uh, I like losing. It's a, it's a passion. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I'm from Massachusetts, so I'm a pastor. Oh, fuck you. Okay, I'm hanging up. <laughs> so oh, I I, no. I know your pain. I know your pain. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I'm also a Yankee fan. I went to school up in uh, Massachusetts, well, New Hampshire, uh, and I worked in Massachusetts pretty much my whole fucking life. So a lot of my close friends are from the Boston area and the Ooh. ribbing. I mean, all we do is bust each other's chops because that's what we do. I mean, come yeah, on. yeah. You, you, but. There is that mutual respect of championships and stellar players, like you know, watching Bill Russell. We you know, that fucking sucked. Nobody wanted yeah, to see yeah. that. Uh, you know, we love David Ortiz. We all respect David Ortiz, just like you guys respect fucking Derek Jeter. There's a fucking like a camaraderie there. But fuck Tom Brady. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Tom Brady. Oh, I got. I, think I got a, a buddy. Collective... He hates Tom Brady with a passion, but he's the biggest Pats fan. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense, dude. Like, you. I, it does. I, I knew a lot of Pat fans that aren't Tom Brady fans. My buddy Andrew, who's up in uh, New Hampshire, he hates. He just hates Tom Brady. Doesn't like that he left. Figures that he should have just like lived out his career there. Probably could have got him another ring or two if they built the system around him right. Like, bring all those players you brought to Tampa Bay to to New England. And with that championship there, why not? Why did you have to go to Tampa Bay and do that? 
that's the argument he makes, which I totally agree with. Like, why'd you have to go and do that? You heard the past. Hey, you, you get old and you retire to Florida. That's what you do, you know? Yeah, and that's exactly what the other side of the argument is like. You know, <laughs> we, you're in Orlando now. I lived in Pembroke Pines. I'm a Jew. We all end up there at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's it's a great area so uh, obviously are you uh, a tampa bay fan now that that brady is there no i don't i don't uh i don't really care i still i'm a still a uh, pats fan uh um, okay. i like i like mac jones it's funny uh i played basketball i played soccer but i was i you know loved all sports and um man uh it's it's no different in new york the boston fans it's like Oh man, I can't believe they did. Why didn't they put this guy in? And I'm like, if they win or lose has no bearing on my life whatsoever. Like uh, it's fun to watch. I enjoy it. I love the playoffs, but man, if they lose, if they win, like it is what I'm not on the team, you know, (laughs) I'm not the coach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We just, I just had that conversation with a buddy who's a Mets fan. Um, we, cause we just had the subway series going back and forth because they swept us, you know, two game sweep and Yankee fans aren't talking. Like, we're just like, yeah, two game sweep right after the all-star break. Congratulations guys. Let it talk to us in October. And they're all yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're just bitter. You're just like, dude, at first up, it doesn't matter. It's just two games. It's people we don't, that don't care about what we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's entertaining to watch. There were great games. I fucking loved each, each one of those games. Uh, but no, I'm I'm with you, man. I, I don't get butt hurt when my team loses or a team beats me. Like I, when the Patriots, the only time I get butt hurt is when the Patriots beat us. Because <laughs> fuck the Patriots, man. Ugh, I'm sorry. I have yeah. I have an inner loathing to the Patriots. Obviously. When the when the Pats lost to the Eagles to uh, Nick Nick Foles, Nick uh, Foles oh. of, of all people, of all people. <laughs> that one that one hurt. I actually felt that one. That one I did. <laughs> I did feel for a few days with that one. We all became Philly fans for just <laughs> yeah. five minutes, yeah. and we hate Philly. As as a again Jersey guy, fuck Philly. I'm sorry, yeah. I, yeah. I hate it there. <laughs> yeah, but but New, you were New willing to let away. bygones be bygones for that one game. One game. Hey everybody, I want to quickly mention Food Forest Abundance. Food Forest Abundance is a great way to create your own self-sustaining food forest and naturally occurring ecosystem that's commonly found in nature, but designed specifically for you. Through multiple layers of trees, shrubs, herbs, vines, rhizomes, mushrooms, and perennial vegetables, you can become your own supply chain without the typical maintenance required of a garden. From small spaces to large areas, both urban and suburban, Food Forest Abundance wants us to get back to our roots in nature by engaging with our food production in a meaningful way. For more information, click on the link in the description below and start your journey today. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. I think there was a few times I actually wanted the Pats to win uh, recently just because of you know what's been going on in football. Like, I don't want to see the Rams win. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a 49ers fan. So if you're playing the Rams, f- any team playing the Rams, I'm for it. So if there's any team I hate more right now than the Patriots, it's got to be the Rams. Okay. I can dig that. Uh, yeah. I was I was disappointed that they won. I thought uh, – um, Cincinnati was the Bengals. Yeah. yeah. I just found out the Bengals have the, or like the uh, uh, lowest evaluated franchise when it comes to dollars and obviously the Cowboys the most, but that's amazing what they've done with that franchise to be able to get to that level so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're amazing. That's, uh, yeah. That's pretty, pretty. So you cool. play, do you play fantasy? I do. I, do? I won last year for the first time in 10 years. So. Uh... Bravo. Bravo. 10 years. Yeah. Good for you, sir. I've come in, I've come in second a couple times, but normally I'm like in the middle of the pack. So it was it was good. And it was like a fluke too. Like I was I came in fourth place, played the first place guy, beat him, played the second place guy, beat him. And uh, you know, it was like, you know, fantasy. It's like I've got the yeah. best team, but all of a sudden this week, like everyone decided to suck. So uh, you know, That's- or or you get like 60 points and you still beat a guy who got 58 points. You know what I mean? And right. Like, right. Uh, so, <laughs> I lost. We, we do something in our league. That's a little different. <laughs> we, you know how you get eight teams go in the point leader of the lowest teams. So uh, eight through 12, for the most part, the point leader out of those teams is the AC, not okay. the AC. 
So normally what happens is it's always the last place team, which is fucking weird in our league, is the point leader out of those people. Three out of the last four years, that team has won. Wow. Yep. Wow. I was the first place team. I lost once all year. I was the point leader out of the whole fucking thing. Just dominated. That team fucking beat me in the Super Bowl. <laughs> but And like destroyed me in the Super Bowl. It wasn't even close. Like I couldn't even watch this. It's like, that was fucking fun. <laughs> I, but that's just how it is. I felt bad too. Cause the, the kid that I beat, uh, I forget his name now. Uh, check my colon. Cause he had colon cancer and he, any, any, he beat it. He beat colon cancer. Okay. But Beautiful. the first time, the first time he ever made it to the finals, he lost to me who shouldn't have really been there. And, right. uh, you know, so that was disappointing for him, but every year, every year, whatever quarterback he picks, it's like, uh, within the first two, three weeks, they're like season is done. And then like his season is done. That's um, tough. That's tough. <laughs> but, Does he uh, play quarterbacks early? He should just wait on quarterbacks. Yeah, it was it was weird. One year, the year I made it to the finals, uh, I picked like the first three or four rounds. I picked quarterback, defense, and a kicker. Guskowski, I picked. This was like seven years ago or something. And everyone was like, "Dude, they were like, dude, why did you do that?" And I'm like, "I'm going with a different strategy." And then when I made it to the finals, they were like, "I can't believe you had this terrible team and you and you made it." But that was. Actually, that was a few years ago when like everybody was getting injured. Um, so I, you got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got super lucky, but uh, Hey, that's, I it's did. all luck. It's all luck anyway. You know, it is. I've won auto drafting. I, I do a bunch of leave and leagues and this year for one of them, I'm like, it's a free league. I'm just going to auto draft and see what happens. And it's a competitive free league, uh, but it's no skin off my teeth, you know, anything happens. And best team, again, best team in the league, fucking dominant. I'm like, I should just fucking set it to auto draft and let, let the computer <laughs> do the trick. I'm apparently not smarter than them. <laughs> that was two years ago. Um, so now that uh, now that we've lost everyone to fantasy talk, uh, um, what Usually, what yeah. motivated you and your wife to uh, start making some content, or did you make it before you guys hooked up? Or uh, so we've been met uh, together way before this. So um, okay, cool. I went. We went to Amsterdam together uh, for a trip. We saw the legalization there before it kind of blew up here. There was only Colorado was the only legal place at the time I went to Amsterdam. Um, and it was just a game changer me- mentally for me because I got being an athlete and, and the stigma uh, of it and that never living in a legal space, being arrested for it so many times. We thought that why don't we start changing the stigma back home? and making it more, you know, normalized. Cause it's so, it's so ingrained in the day-to-day life there that it just, nobody fucking cares. You know what I mean? Like you could smoke a joint in the street and people walk by and go, like, hey, how's it going? Like, they're not going to look, oh, criminal or you're a druggie. There's, it's just totally different stigma over there. So when we came back here, got married a few years later, we went to our honeymoon in Colorado when it was legalized and uh and and kind of experience dispensaries for the first time and try to get an understanding of how this community is going to go forward and when we saw dispensaries being like apple stores we were so excited for the future of the industry like how do we get this out to the masses to show that it is beautiful it's not you're not going into like a you know shitty bodega or a back alley to go get some weed you're going into this beautiful location they know what you know you're doing and pair that with, you know, movies, music, um, uh, TV shows that we watch and do kind of reviews on that. And that's kind of how it started. Uh, I Then I started sharing other people uh, that were like-minded individuals that were what we called weed tubers mm-hmm. uh, and, and shared them on my website, gostoner.com, uh, which kind of turned into like a weed tube of sorts. Uh, and then I ended up building a, a, a fucking app that had like a dating site on it, had like an nice. Instagram feed. And that led me into uh, building a website with a bunch of other uh, influencers uh, and uh, no longer a part of it. But that kind of is what got me into doing the videos and the reviews, because alongside with those people, we needed content for the site. Uh, so my wife was doing reviews uh, at first because I was always in the background. I never wanted to put my face forward. I always just wanted to be like the guy propping up people like, look sure. at this person. Look at this person. Cause I'm a drummer, bro. I'm always in the background. Like I'm the beekeeper. <laughs> You guys fucking do your thing. I'll be back here. Uh, but it ended up being uh, 
that they were just like, dude, just get in front of the f- t- fucking camera. And at first it was really awkward. Like my first few videos, it was almost like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was like trying to be a YouTuber and not myself. And then it kind of started flowing. Uh, once I started doing like videos in the kitchen and started doing what I do love to do best, which is cooking. Uh, and then the mu- and the drumming too. So kind of trying to combine the two uh, and doing something different within the community, it kind of all fell into place and been doing that for about well, two two years now, two and a half years. Awesome. But all around about seven years in the industry. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, again, go down and follow Ghost Owner on your favorite social media platform because uh, there's some great content, some hilarious content. And uh, thank you, sir. Uh, definitely, definitely could tell you've uh, put your time in. So more props to you, my friend. It's a, it's a hobby, but a job. <laughs> yeah. And we love it. We want to change it for the world. We love doing it. Man. Yeah. If we, if we could do just this all day, because obviously we have a, our nine to fives that pay the bills for the most part. But uh, yeah, the dream is to obviously just, you know, cheat and shine it up and smoke weed. And we have ideas of doing other things in the future where we could have full length type of shows, uh, travel type of shit. So there's things that we're building towards that hopefully uh, can take us there. Excellent. Awesome. Well, we'll look forward to uh, uh, watching out for that and sharing that content as well. Uh, Appreciate it, bro. So, yeah, Ghost Owner, uh, thanks for coming on Drew TV. Let everybody know the best place they can find you. Thank you. Uh, Instagram is where I'm probably the most active. Uh, TikTok, I'm a silly asshole, and YouTube is where all my long-form videos go. Ghost Owner, like Ghost Owner Life or Ghost Owner. Awesome. Great. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go down there, smash that like button for Ghost Owner. Uh, leave oh. a comment. Let them know what you think of uh, your fantasy football picks, as well as uh, <laughs> as if you've ever been to uh, Tom's River. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I did used to go there as Let's a kid. Talk about we, it. we went down to uh, the Jersey Shore uh, on some summer, summers. So uh, nice, bro. Awesome. What's and your favorite? If you are memory watching this on YouTube, make sure you go down and subscribe to Drove TV because otherwise you would miss dope guests like Ghost Owner here. So uh, thank you for having me, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. And as always, thank you for tuning in. Smoke them if you got them. What's up, Drew TV family? You can now stream the audio version of all these episodes on your favorite podcast player. And if you like more episodes like this, check out this playlist we put together over here for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't want to miss more great content from Drew TV. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, Smoke them if you got them.